My name is Sonny, and while we're waiting for Elder, my grandmother, Cecile, to come out, I'm going to defer to the Chinook to sing a song for us. I think this is a good time to open. I won't be a microphone if you don't want to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to say, you know, wafla, ayu Some great thanks to all of you guys for being here. Um, the song that I'm about to share with you is known as Dope Baba. It is a song that was uh, gifted back to us by a man named Sobier. Um, and I learned this song through a man named Nastio. Tony Johnson, who you saw in the film. Um, and I have that authority to sing this song. This song contains both Chinook Wawa, the uh, Creole language, uh, the trade language uh, from our tribe and our community, as well as some Lashutsi as well. And one of the things that this song is doing is that it's known as the Changer Song. It is one that we often sing as a way to welcome changes discuss changes, hope for change. That's what this film is doing. It's calling for a really important change. And so that's why whenever we come out to these events, this is the song that we often share with you. It's the, sh the song that we have the authority to share with you. And so when I'm singing this song, I want you guys to kind of keep that in mind, that we're calling down a very important change here in any way that we can. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,
Okay, I'd like to start with welcoming you, thanking you for being here, What Promised Land. Um, I'd like to mention that that if, you, if you've seen most of us, when our neighbors of Snook were done singing that song, we did like to actually raise our hands. Okay, this is how we this is how we clap. This is how we we say thank you. This is how we offer our blessings. Thank you. <laughs> so to start, um, I'd like to mention that we're going to be on Indian time. <laughs> Does everybody know what Indian time is? Okay, I'm gonna tell you then. Oh, you don't know? Okay, we'll get done when we're done. <laughs> no hurry. So I am Sunny. I am Quinault and Duwamish. I grew up um, going back and forth from Tahola and Seattle. Um, my grandmother, when I was a kid, she'd be driving me around, telling me stories and introduced me to all my grand aunts and grand uncles and great grandmothers and everybody. I knew all my cousins three, four, five generations out. I grew up with them. I heard their stories. And everywhere grandma would take me, she'd say, look, grandson, right there. That's a good place for a longhouse. A few days later, a month later, she'd say, look, grandson, right there. That's a good place for a longhouse. So that vision that she had was, was a long time ago. I'm only 22, so you know. <laughs> and one of the proudest days that we've had was when the longhouse was built and it opened, the Duwamish Longhouse and Cultural Center. It's a huge, huge step for our people, the Duwamish, to have a longhouse the first one in over, what, 10 years, 12 years? Oh, maybe 100? <laughs> but it's, it's there. Go down to the longhouse. Say hi, look around, look at the artifacts that are there that we have, even though Port of Seattle kind of messed up and gave, gave them away to someone else. So come on down. Um, to start with, I'd like to start with this young lady here to my left. This is Kaya. So Kaya in Lashutsi, his grandmother. Cecile Hansen. Yes, I am the Kaya TM. I'm really honored to be here to be with you as you watch this promised land. Uh, I can't believe that um, it is really a credible uh, film regarding the acknowledgement and lack of, but as I say today, even though uh, there might be some de decision or some opinion by that we're not acknowledged, um, if we were the first tribe to sign the Point Elliot Treaty, I've always say we are recognized and we're going through this process of being not recognized, but we're still here and we are the people of the inside, we're still here. And I'm very proud that I'm still involved in advocating and mentoring and being on behalf of the Duwamish people all over the place. Um, I was just thinking this recently that, uh, that our membership should be able to come to a potlatch soon so that we can all get together and to, to even maybe we'll be able to uh, see the promised land and they can understand what we're going through, but it's not a, it's not a, a bad film. It's a film that we, uh, we need to uh, see. Um, however, I think that to come together and to realize about their history, I'm not talking about our membership, we need to do that. And I'm hoping that we can create this potlatch and come together and I'm glad that I'm here to share a few words with you um, because, um, because yes, we're Duwamish and you are living in the indigenous land of the Chief Seattle people uh, territory. And um, it seems to me now that 
looking at downtown again, it sure has been over, over, <laughs> overdeveloped. It's really uh, amazing. But anyway, we people, the Duwamish are glad to be here and we're still here and I'm happy that you were able to, um, to see the film and, and uh, maybe as a suggestion, you could all write a letter to the President of the United States and say, hey, give us the right status to the Duwamish tribe. But that's okay, we're, no, we're okay, we're still here and, and uh, we enjoy being here and, uh, and we are the people of the inside. Is that okay there, Branson? Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of cousins, speaking of cousins, I'd like to introduce the director of the Longhouse, Yvette. Haslahau, um, I'm Evie Judsitz, the Doab's Chad Alti Siat. I'm Yvette, I'm of the um, Duwamish tribe of Seattle. I'm a councilwoman and interim executive director for the Longhouse. Um, so I'm really glad to be here and share space with you and for us to be vulnerable in many ways to you because um, a lot of the times watching the promised land is like ripping a bandaid off. Jane Naika Yachel, P. Naika Chinook. My name is Jane and I'm Chinook. Um, I was listening to Cecile talking about we'll always be here. And the, some of us at the Chinook Indian Nation were talking to folks at the Nature Conservancy recently, asking them to give us title to the land when they're done holding it. <laughs> And uh, they said, we plan to hold it in perpetuity. And we told them, that's a long time. We'll still be here when you're done with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I agree that uh, watching this is like ripping a Band-Aid off. It was kind of difficult to see people in the movie that have passed on and you know, the years they fought to get our recognition back. We were recognized. We were terminated in the Oregon Termination Act. We were recognized again at the end of the Clinton administration, and that was rescinded. And we're still working at it. Um, it's, it's just... I have no words for it. Uh, maybe Aaron. <laughs> I probably have too many words. Slachalium Tilachum Taishik, Aaron Arrow Jones, Naganim, P. Chinook Shawash, Tilachum Naga. So my name is Aaron Arrow Jones. Um, I'm a member of the Chinook Indian Nation. I'm descended both Lower Chinook and Wakaya come both from the Washington no. side. Um, I, I'll definitely probably talk a little bit more about the film as we get into some of the questions. Um, I have had a very long history with this film. Um, I, I had the privilege of being with Jane and my people to be there at the world premiere in Astoria of the film. And uh, it was probably a couple screenings after that I was asked to come on and to do some panels just like this one. And I have lost count of how many I've had to do in that time. And, each time I watch this film, it just kind of brings back a little bit more of just like the things I remember of the beginning, but more importantly, the things that have changed, you know, the, the important, wonderful changes that have happened for both our peoples and the things that haven't changed and the things that we've lost. So it's, it can be kind of a roller coaster in that regard, but I definitely want us to get to some of these questions too. And, you know, I think, that's kind of where I want to be with that is just kind of thinking back on that time of, you know, that first screening to now and just all of the changes that have happened. Thank you. So some of these questions that we have here were almost already answered. 
you know, during the introduction, and I appreciate that. That shows leadership and vision of what we're here for. And um, the one question that really stands out that could be answered today by the panel here that maybe you folks don't understand or maybe you have had that question before. To each one of you, I ask you, what does tribal, tribal sovereignty mean to you? Kaya. That we're still here. When the treaty was signed with the, with the Duwamish tribe, that was one thing that we never gave up, that we are still here and we are a tribal entity in the state of Washington. Oh, <clears throat> for me, tribal sovereignty is um, returning and allowing us to live on our lands, to be a source for our people. When I say source, is where our people can come to us. They can have housing security, food security, employment security, and a safe place to reclaim their cultural identity and a place to thrive and just to be. And so being a source to our people is tribal sovereignty where we can create our own energy, grow our own foods. So that's what tribal sovereignty means to me. To me, tribal sovereignty means many things, but what comes to mind right now is the ability for someone to go out and be able to subsistence hunt and fish to help feed their family is important to eat the foods that your ancestors ate. And another close to my heart is um, when tribal children, for whatever reason, are taken into state custody, we have no say as to what kind of homes they go into. Um, so they will be in non-tribal homes. They could be adopted out um, in Pacific County. The, the Department of Health, whoever repossesses children, um, is very racist, and it's a big problem for Chinook parents who are foster parents, and it's a big problem for Chinook parents who've had problems, and it's just heart-wrenching to see those things happen. Yeah, and that's an excellent point to make, too, because for me, tribal sovereignty, it's responsibilities, because for thousands upon thousands of years, one of the things that you saw in this film is you may have seen the salmon that was placed on cedar boughs uh, that was having berries fed to it. Uh, me and Jane and our people, we know that as Taikwana, or the first salmon. And that is an incredibly important ceremony and responsibility that our people hold that we have been doing since Coyote first told us of what to do. And we have been doing that, again, for thousands upon thousands of years, and then suddenly some strangers show up, start telling us what we can and cannot do with those responsibilities, starts dictating whether or not we even get to fish, whether we get to subside on our lands. And that's what I see that as, is that it's a reassurance that our people, the Chinook people, the Duwamish people, we know what needs to be done because we've had these responsibilities for far longer than the blink of an eye that the United States has been here. And that's why when we talk about this, when we're talking about these rights and upholding these rights, it's so important. I'm so happy to hear the folks in the film, the folks on the stage saying, this is not like something that's given to us. We've had this from the very beginning. We understand what needs to be done we understand what it is to live in a right, protocol-driven way on our lands. And as any sovereign, independent people should, 
we should be the ones that have the agency to dictate what those actions and choices are on our Aboriginal territory and on this continent. That's what that means to me. Thank you. So as we sit here tonight, we feel the emotion, we hear the emotion that each one of the panelists have here. And even within yourselves, you're, you're watching the promised land and you're forming your own opinions and you're feeling the emotions of the speakers that are there. And I'm proud to say that each one of those people that, that took a part of promised land are a very tenacious people. Our people are tenacious historically. And uh, um, it's great to have that feeling that our elders, our ancestors, passed that on to us to be able to stand up and still move forward in who we are and still say, we are still here. So with that, can each of you share something significant that stood out in the film? I think that we did a good job. Yes. <laughs> I think we really did a good job. It, it told a good story about the Chinook history and the Duwamish history, and I'm and I'm glad that uh, that we're here to share that with you. I mean, it's it's a really great story of these two tribes, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Right now. For me, it was um. When the Chinook elder was speaking, and you know, he said the U.S. government can't tell us who we are and where we come from, and I feel that way as well, right? Because, um, you know, as the Wamish, we have not just the government, but we have tools of oppression put against us. Same with the Chinook. You know, and sometimes they're, you know, they're, they're the arrows that are in your back, right? As, as a tribal council, we get bullets in the front and we get arrows in the back. Um, so, you know, there are tribes that try to tell us who we aren't. And uh, that's, what, that's what really stood out to me tonight. And every time I watch it, something else stands out. But um, tonight, that, that, that felt and hit a little bit deeper, that arrow that, so, thank you. Something that kind of popped out at me tonight is something that, that wasn't there, maybe it wouldn't fit in, but in, in talking about that was a long time ago, it doesn't matter. In 1855, at our Tansy Point Treaty negotiations, Every man, woman, old person, baby, every Chinook person from all of our tribes were there and were made to understand what they were signing. And they made plans for the winter based on promises and a lot of people starved to death. And when they came back to the Columbia River, they were picking up fish heads from under canneries to eat. The fishery had been really, you know, decimated and people were poor and they were promised something that didn't come and had to put it all back together for themselves and that wasn't easy. So it wasn't a long time ago, not when everybody knew what they were doing and told their kids who told their grandkids. Well, that's what stepped out at me, was that little tidbit. For me, I, I come and go with these new kind of thoughts every time I watch the film. Um, I think the thing that sticks out to me, this, this watch through, is just all of the actual human beings that are in this. It can sometimes be, especially if it's your first time seeing this film, it can be so easy to get caught up in the, the story that is being told the, the difficulties, these weird processes that the United States puts us through, and, and you get kind of caught up in that. But for me, so many of these faces on this screen are my family members. 
So many people up here are people that teach me, that lead me. Folks like this person sitting right next to me here, Jane, you and your mother, just all of the impact that you guys have had on my life and all the stories that I've heard from all of these folks that are up here, their joys, the things that make them laugh, the things that make them angry, want to fight, want to keep working. That's one thing that I noticed jumped out at me once again was just how hard our people have worked, not just to go through these processes, not just to make sure that we get to, you know, be seen as people, as indigenous peoples in the eyes of some, you know, foreign entity like the United States, but also the fact that a young Chinook like me gets to learn from my elders, gets to be up here with Duwamish representatives, these wonderful people from Duwamish who I'm privileged to know, privileged to learn beside, that is so impactful to me every time I see it. And it also makes it hurt all the more worse when I see faces that are not here anymore. And so that's one thing that I always like to try and come back to during these is to let you know is like, take this story with you. Take these, these political conversations with you. Learn from this, but don't forget these people's story is not just on this screen. It started a long time ago, and we are the echoes of all of that work standing here today. I just want everyone to remember that like I do as well. I, I will say something off of what you just said. <clears throat> Hold on to that word young, because you won't be able to reference <laughs> yourself as young forever. <laughs> There's not too much there anymore. <laughs> I'm only 22. <laughs> okay, so just real quick, can everybody raise your hands like this? Okay, raise your left foot. Okay. I can't believe you guys did that. <laughs> but it's a balance in life, right? Young, old, we can all do this. So, you know, one thing that our people traditionally have always, always, in any tribe or any people you talk to, one of the strongest medicines that we have in our life is humor. Even through the adversity and the drugs and the alcohol and the fighting and the differences um, that we have amongst each other, humor is what heals us. Humor is what keeps us going every day. Humor is what is good in our life. So go ahead and put your leg up and hands up again. Okay. <laughs> So uh, one thing that is very important in um, today's economy or society, and a lot of questions are being asked about today, is um, for all the tribes, but specifically for the panel here today, I want to ask you, you know, what is it that the community can do at large um, to help to better our cause for recognition? And Kai already said, write the president. Already said, write the president. Oh, yes, yeah. Well, you know, um, uh, it seems to me that he has a, a, a bigger position in this government. However, I think it also comes from the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And, and, and also, I love that I love the judge who agreed that yes, we went through all that process of years and years of trying to prove who we are, in which it was uh, a lot of time on our, a lot of consultants and attorneys and everything. But that judge said, "Hey, we are we are recognized. You know, it came legally, and today again we are still trying to prove our cause. But we're still here, and we are acknowledged, and we are recognized." No more questions. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Several ways that I like to share with people, how do you stand by the tribes on the land you occupy? Um, you know, tell our stories. You know, there are so many people that I meet that are transplants of great Seattle and King County, a lot of them don't even know that the Duwamish tribe are the first people of 
Seattle, and that's by design. Thank you. Sign the petitions, write your locals, Adam Smith, you know, write um, our Senate president, city, state, government levels. Come by and visit us at the Longhouse. But most importantly, what's going to leave the longest impact is educate the youth because they're their futures. And as we as natives, we pass teachings on to our youth. So to me, that is uh, really the longest impact. And then obviously, Come by our, you know, so come visit us at our art markets. We have an art market happening November uh, 25th to 22nd, uh, to 7th at the Duwamish Longhouse. Come shop at our gift store. Come rock a, you know, buy oh, a Seattle t-shirt. Um, there's multiple ways you can support us. Laugh at our jokes. <laughs> <laughs> like, funny. <laughs> so. Well, I'm going to put in a good pitch for the Duwamish Longhouse store. I've uh, spent a fair amount of money there. <laughs> um, for Chinook, uh, we actually have a website, chinookjustice.org, and there's links to petitions and sample letters, and um, you can join a mailing list to be informed on what we're currently working on. So that's Chinook. C H I N O O K justice.org. And you might notice that I say Chinook, not Chinook. I think Chinook is some warm wind somewhere. But um, <laughs> the people are with a hard C H. <laughs> yeah. um, Jane kind of touched on the exact one I was thinking as well as Chinookjustice.org. It's just, it's an amazing website. It has a lot of uh, like historical information about just kind of the background of not only just our people, but also just kind of our efforts, what we're trying to uh, essentially do in this regard. So this is something that's actually really interesting that uh, another big change that has happened with the film. There, there actually is a different version of this film uh, that during the credits, uh, we actually filmed some additional uh, uh, interviews with uh, our tribal chairman, Tony Johnson, and uh, one of our other council members, Rachel Cushman, um, that described that we currently do have a lawsuit uh, before uh, uh, the federal government. Uh, we, yes, it's, it's wonderful, it's amazing. We have some amazing lawyers one of which unfortunately has gone on and we, we thank him for everything that he's done for us and those that are continuing to fight for us now. Um, things are progressing very well. We're hoping to have more information for you, but we're very optimistic on that. But basically again, chinookjustice.org, it can help you become you know, a more active ally to you know, make sure that we uh, are alerting people in power to take action, take change. It has already yielded incredible results. So if you're asking yourself, you know, like, well, I'm just like this one person, you'd be surprised who has been moved by this story just by a couple voices speaking up. Also, I don't know if you guys want to plug, uh, do you want to plug Real Rent at all too? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's plug Real Rent. Thank you for that. <laughs> So, well, that was a little louder than normal. He got me excited with real rent. <laughs> so, um, another way, you know, when, when we do invite our, our friends to come down to the Longhouse uh, and also visit us online as well, but um, there has been a social justice movement. And part of that movement um, is to acknowledge the original people of the land and how we're all responsible to the U.S. government to pay taxes. Um, there are citizens of Seattle, King County, outside of King County, other states, even other countries 
Uh, they pay a monthly contribution and or a one-time donation to the Duwamish, uh, which has helped us um, in a lot of ways and it's still helping us, right? It's helping us reclaim our cultural identity. It's helped us uh, finance and uh, pay for the team of attorneys that have refiled a federal lawsuit uh, in May of 2020. So thank you for that. It's a wonderful program. I've I've been. It's it's easy to set up even monthly payments. It's it's a wonderful service. Almost. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to tell a quick story. So. I've always admired my grandmother. I have always loved my grandmother. And I've always told everybody stories about my grandmother having little feet, big shoes. She is a force to be reckoned with. She is a very tenacious woman that has <clears throat> taught me a lot in my life about clam digging, about our ancestors going across the, the bridge to Suquamish. Um, there's so many stories that she has told me, and I, and I, I thank you, Kaya, for that. I thank you for telling my daughters those same stories, even though they don't appear to listen. <laughs> Today is a good day. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming here. Um, one thing that I can say that may help with the betterment of, of the Duwamish and the Chinook is to get the word about what we just did tonight. Let's do this more. Let's get more of, of the world to watch this and understand and hear the story and then see what's going on today because the battle's not over. The battle continues. And since Kaya has spoken, she has said, no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> so Tiger is waiting for Kaya, so we must get home. Um, I wanna thank each one of you, the panel, for being here and your, your strong words and your medicine. Um, I wanna thank Mohai for, for having us and for asking me to moderate tonight. I am honored to be here. I thank you very much for your patience. Um, Kaya, I thank you for your patience. No, I just want to thank you, and I want to thank everybody that that has uh, come this evening to enjoy the, the promised land and, and uh, have a nice evening and uh, be safe going home. Thank you. Hi, Umasi. <laughs> Wait.